Card Zero, Echoes of the 99, by August Servant, Volume 1. Lecture 21, The Relationship of Feelings. The cycle of desire, in terms of lifelong relationships, tend to decline in passion over time, to put it mildly. Where, if I were to paint a picture of this phenomenon, it would most likely appear as the following. While you become engaged to your lover, the person that you end up marrying has already regressed to your friend on the passion scale, as the flame of your once hot love ebbs down to a spark, where in time you raise your kids with your partner and you grow old, not with your spouse, but with someone more akin to a sibling than anything else. Only in the end, to become each other's parents, where you feed, clothe, and change diapers as needed. With the moral here being, the idea is two becoming one, because in the end, life becomes a team effort where everything falls away except the bond, the love felt for one another. And it's not a race or even a marathon, but a lifetime commitment, as in Genesis 2.24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. My advice? Don't marry your best friend. They're already yours. Instead, you should bond yourself to that person in which you can grow into. That way, even if it doesn't work out, you can still walk away greater than when you came, and thus Look back on your past relationship with gratitude and thanksgiving rather than disgust and hatred while still harboring feelings of emptiness and longing. Relationships 101 from my perspective. Nine points of fact. One, I would not marry a woman that I could not control. As a matter of fact, I would not even propose to a woman that I could not control. Two, while love is many things, what it is not is intelligent. Three, love continues to defy all logic, rhyme, or reason. And there is no mind out there today or yesterday that has the capacity or wisdom to explain away the emotion of love. It simply cannot be defined. Because while love is the tool, what it is not is the builder. Four, meanwhile, people continue to go from one failed relationship after another, thinking that love is enough, while ignoring their own life experience that shows them in grave detail that they are wrong. Five, love is not an answer. Love is not a reason. Love is not some kind of magical glue that holds people together. And if we're being honest, if people could legally divorce their badass children that they love with all of their hearts, they would. 6. Love is purpose. Love is cause. Love is the strongest foundation in all of creation from which all things great and small can stand upon and hold, but not without work. 7. We can understand that faith without works is dead. But yet, we cannot make that same correlation with love. Why is that? Perhaps this is why we say that love is blind. 8. Since you cannot manage what you cannot control, then the logic would stand that, without a compassionate leader managing, directing, and communicating with a loving and respectful partner, lover, or friend, there can be no progress. Period. Nine, love is the ocean and the boat, but without a rudder, oars, and a qualified captain, you aren't going anywhere. Furthermore, while in the midst of this plight, love actually makes you its bitch or hostage. And so I say again, relationships aside, because there has to be a testing ground, I would not marry or even think about proposing to a woman that I could not control. There is an old saying, never marry your fantasy, 
because your mate is limited in as much as they are only human and thus cannot possibly match the expanse of your ever-growing imagination, thereby leaving you disappointed one frustration at a time until after boredom you find yourself in a place past caring. The toughest job on earth. Marriage has got to be the hardest job ever because there is no cruise control. It doesn't get easier over time. And the only way that it can get better is with increased effort. And even that is no guarantee unless both parties are willing to commit the time and put in the work. To have and to hold. Hard work is the best friend that I have ever known. But wise work is who I married and entrusted my fortune still to this day. With the moral here being, while no one can get by without working, it pays better to work smarter and not harder. For as it is written, Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Therefore, it is in this way, I am married to my mission to share, teach, aid, and instruct, choosing virtue as my champion to aid me through this life. For better, of course, but even more so for worse. The reason being, my wife, Faith, is always there to show me that hard times have not come to stay, but to pass, leaving behind only the lessons for those with the courage to endure the storm for the promise of a new day. Lastly, growth hurts, and patience is a process that is very uncomfortable to endure. So if you think that your marriage is rough, Try a union with faith and know your true measure, because that which stops you is how strong you are. Thus, I could never divorce faith, because time has proven to me that we are truly better together than apart. Salah. The new birds and the bees talk. In your head, love is a beautiful thing. A regular Walt Disney movie complete with talking animals. But on paper, in the form of a cost-benefit analysis, where everything must be taken into account, then weighed and measured like any legitimate business plan, it looks more like a FEMA disaster plan of attack. In short, Dating is like you get to eat all the sausage you want. But in relationships, however, you have to see exactly how the sausage is made. And in marriage, you have to make the damn sausage yourself. With the moral here being, relationships are not for weak-minded dreamers, chasing fantasies planted there from books, movies, and the lies told to them by their drunk uncle and friends in break rooms talking about their significant others in glowing terms. And if we're being honest, marriage is war in search of peace, while being assaulted from all sides, physically, emotionally, and financially, with or without children, with or without love, while working towards a tomorrow you never really want to be a part of. Lastly, I hear all this talk about heroes. Well, check this out. If you want to meet a real hero in the flesh, go up to anyone in a committed relationship that appears to be working and shake his or her hand in awe. The Warrior's Creed. The warrior neither loves nor grieves, only serves. As truth speaks to emptiness, thereby giving it shape and form, Love speaks to emptiness as well, giving it meaning backed with purpose and desire. But truth is not love, because love is not intelligent and requires no understanding to work its magic on the simplest to the most complex among us. Thus, no one is immune to the touch of love. It blunts all blades and neutralizes all ambitions. Therefore, the warrior that chooses love must also lay down their cause for the sake of fellowship and duty to family. 
While anyone can celebrate, what separates us down to a man is how we process disappointment and deal with grief. So take heed, for you will never truly know a person until you have seen them lose or suffer a grievous loss. And where happiness brings with it its own energy, sadness will suck you dry if you let it, and then go on to siphon the joy out of anyone else unfortunate enough to be too close. Finally, if fear is the most destructive emotion, then grief is the most wasteful. So surrender your sorrow onto God's hands and allow your energy to flow out and then upwards towards the elevation of principles. And while grief finds a way to visit or test everyone in life, it is the warrior that bars the door against it, refusing entry. With the moral here being, what makes or breaks us in matters sorrowful in nature is our attitude towards it. Dialogue. Are you married? No. Will you ever get married? Not in the foreseeable future. Why not? My relationship with God is enough at this time. Well then, what do you look for in a woman? Obedience. Wait, what? You did ask the question. May I have a moment to explain? I'm listening. Success in anything is based on your adherence or obedience to set principles. Because without them, you are left to trial and error and slips and falls throughout your life's journey. Now, as for me, I have learned from my mistakes. And I now have a map to say that I know where I'm going and I know exactly how to get there. So if you're going to be with me, then there are rules that must be observed. Does that make you their master? No, of course not. But it is the duty of any guide to inform those who would follow. You must do as I say if you're coming with me. Scripture 1. Proverbs 29.18 Where there is no vision, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who keeps the law, wisdom's instruction. 2. James 4.8 Purify your hearts, you people who can't make up your mind. Man must make the first move. Draw near to God, and he draws near to you. 3. Job 12.12 12. With the ancient is wisdom, and in length of days, understanding. I submit to you, be worthy. Please allow me to introduce myself. You can call me August Servant, and it is a privilege to bring to you my captured Echoes of the 99 by way of Card Zero, the Fool.